Hey everybody, it's Tyler Tapper, and today we're going to turn some more of that old firewood into something pretty. So if you saw my other lathe wood turning video, you know that I'm an absolute novice with this. Uh, if you see anything I'm doing wrong, I should be doing different. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. I appreciate any uh, tips or tricks you guys know, but uh, come on and learn along with me. We're going to try something a little bit more complicated this time. What I'm using for this is some old spalted pine. It was a big, huge tree in our backyard. And it lost one of its limbs. The tree hung on for a couple of years, but eventually the whole thing died and I had to chainsaw it down. These are all little pieces that I had just chopped up and thrown in a pile and they'd been sitting out for around a year just getting weathered. As a result, this wood is not very structurally stable and has some pithy parts. That thing would have thwacked me right in the face if I didn't have a uh, face shield on, so I'm glad I had gotten one of those for this project. Uh, no harm done, but scared the crap out of me. After that popped off on me, I went back to get this down to round. I'm going through and just basically getting it so it's a perfect cylinder. That way I can work with it a little bit easier. I'm not turning any air and I can start laying out my pattern. I have a general idea what I want to do with this and how I want to shape it and what these lines are doing. Just giving me some reference on where I want to start cutting things into it. So to start hogging out more of the material, I switch from the skew I use to mark those lines back to the gouge. I'm just putting a taper on this. It'll taper down into what will be the bottom. Moving up to the top, I wanted there to be a platform on there. Uh, so I'm doing another taper coming in that way. And you can see I'm kind of going over the marking lines I made, which isn't a big deal. I'm not trying to match this to anything specific. Again, those are just there to give me a little bit of reference on where I want to put things. Switch back to the skew. I put another line in so I can get the spacing how I wanted it. Originally, I was going to have this be a mirror image top and bottom, but the wood had some different ideas for me. So that's one thing that's kind of nice about this. If you make a box that isn't square, people know, but if you make a spindle a slightly different shape, nobody knows you're going for something different. Something people can in fact tell, uh, though, is when it's a really rough finish. So I was talking earlier about how the wood had gotten kind of punky sitting out, and you can see how I just really was getting a crappy finish off the tool. So, you know, I, I come back in there, I try and grind it down a little bit. I come back in with a scraper, figuring that's going to give me a better surface finish, and it does. There's less of the tear out. Um, but it's just still isn't really satisfactory after all of that. So because there's so much that tear out, when I started with my sanding, I started with a 60 grit paper, and you can tell it really changed the shape of uh, changed the shape of the spindle as I was doing it. But it did make the surface finish really smooth and prevented the tear out. So I don't know if it's again just that really soft wood, if my tools aren't sharp enough, or what's going on with it. But the sanding paper did seem to make it acceptable. I went up all the way through the grits. I started with that 80 and I went all the way up to 220 before I started putting the super glue finish on. Uh, super glue finish is cool. It's going to allow me to basically polish this up to pretty close to a mirror shine. Um, it just gives you a hard surface to work with. So I know super glue is supposed to dry really fast. I have found that if I let it sit overnight, uh, the paper gets gunked up a lot less. Uh, I just seem to have better luck with it. So. What I'm using there is some orange oil and beeswax. I'm using that basically to lubricate the sandpaper. I'm going up 320 and I stop at 800 grit. This uh, 800 grit that's on a cloth sanding back pad thing works really well. Uh, it seems to really polish it up nicely. With this particular one, I didn't go any higher than 800. A lot of times they'll go 1000, 1200, but I honestly don't notice a whole lot of difference with it. So I think you can stop there and be fine. Specifically why I chose this piece of wood was because of where the branches were coming out of it and I thought it would turn down pretty cool so I'm glad I could see it that deep into the wood. At this point I had a spindle and I had to decide what to do with it. Uh, just kind of out of coincidence the top was again the right, just the exact right size for a votive to fit inside there and still give me a little bit of a wall between it and the edge so I didn't think it would break. The point right in the center makes a perfect pilot hole so you can get the Forstner bit just exactly in the center of the piece pretty easily. 
Oh, it's still pretty cool to me that you can take these pieces of wood that from the outside just look like logs, throw them on the lathe and get so much cool texture and grain out of them and all the different color variations in them from sitting out. Um, all the little branches that poke out the leaf cool patterns in there. Try not to subject you guys to too many more of these candle holders. And I have some projects coming up with some different woods that are on the lathe too. Um, but it's just really good practice to be able to take that cheap wood and it's uh, you don't have to worry about messing anything up. You can just go to town on it. As always, I really appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day to watch my video. Uh, if you liked it, go ahead and smash that like button. If you'd like to see more, hit subscribe. If you know anyone that would like this video, share it around. That really helps me. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time. Hey everybody, I want to let you know that I'm starting up a Patreon campaign. Uh, if you guys are feeling generous, I'd love it if you'd check down the description. There's a link down in there to my Patreon page where you can donate. Otherwise, I really appreciate your continued support just by watching the videos. Thank you.